Hello and welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco, and tonight we're going to be talking about uh, downsizing or growing your collection. Oregon Knife Guy, good to have you here. I'm sorry, I should probably say Oregon Knife Guy, good to have you here, sir. Uh, I, I, I've been noticing uh, you are a, definitely a, a um, traditional knife guy. It's good to uh, have you uh, be in your orbit. Uh, Nick says, perfect, my Friday. Kids are sleeping munching on summer sausage and scotch. Yours? Oh, that sounds lovely. Uh, sipping on coffee and, uh, you know, had a little bit of wine with dinner. So there you go. Uh, so tonight, yeah, we're going to be talking about are you downsizing or growing your collection? I've been kind of doing both simultaneously. That's that's the inner struggle. That's the 3 a.m. struggle I've been going through. But before we get to anything, I just want to let everyone know or remind everybody that this is the final week to donate and win to the Ultimate Steel. That's Knife Rights, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, annual fundraising campaign. And uh, part of donating is winning and getting things. Uh, I got a SOG Terminus XR for my donation this year, and uh, they have a lot of other knives that, that were uh, up for winning at the lower donation uh, levels. Now at the tail end, they have some really fine, fine uh, custom-made knives donated to the cause uh, that are up for grabs with your generous donations. So uh, remember, in this next uh, seven days, Knife Rights is there helping us uh, uh, well, helping us uh, honestly carry on with this uh, hobby that we enjoy so much. So, uh, if you have it, uh, if you have it right now, uh, and you can help knife rights, do it in the next week, and you stand to possibly win something cool. Blade Ochre, great to have you here, sir. Uh, Nick, hello, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Hey, Slicey, lovely to have you in here, Brian and Joe. Great to have you. That's a good looking dog. Hey, what's up? We were just talking about uh, the ingress uh, on the last, uh, oh no, in one of my recent videos, actually. Hey, Greg, how you doing? Not feeling hot tonight, but chill in bed and lurk for the, oh, you know what? You always have these interesting little, little, little pictograms. And I, you know, I can't tell if I'm, <laughs> I can't tell if I'm uh, being untoward when I interpret them or what. Uh, but always growing the collection. Me too. And and also, and also always trying to reduce, trying to get to that perfect balance of like uh, indulgence and uh, utility. The knife's meow. Good to have you here, uh, Lindy. Uh, Jock's knife. Jock, good to have you here as always, sir. Coming from across the shock. Kane, how are you? Good to have you here. So uh, tonight I have to, I have to admit Sometimes I can be a little bit absent-minded. Yes, yes, it's true. I can be. And last week when we did a spin the wheel for the uh, knife giveaway for the Gentleman Junkie, that's the $10 per month um, uh, support on Patreon, I accidentally gave the knife away. We spun the wheel. We added a name that didn't necessarily belong there. Barefoot 130, he's a valued patron on Patreon. However, he's not a Gentleman Junkie at the $10 level and that refers, of course, gentlemen, to the gentleman uh, knife, not to you have to be a gentleman to be in on that level, uh, obviously. But uh, in any case, in my absent-minded uh, flurry to get the names to Jim to put in the wheel, I accidentally put uh, an extra name in there. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Barefoot won, but he uh, was, a, was a gentleman indeed and, and got in touch with me and said, don't send me that knife. I'm... I, you know, you made a mistake. I'm not eligible. And I was like, thank you very much. I just sort of realized that myself and uh, you, you helped me stem off a, an uncomfortable situation. So thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And now the song really goes to, now these names have been dub, double, triple, quadruple vetted. And these are all uh, legit gentleman junkies. Jim, you want to bring in the uh, the wheel? Here is the SOG. I would show it off, but it's already in its box, and uh, I just have to change the address. All right, let's spin that sucker. I guess it's already spinning, but does it go faster? I think it does. Ooh, look at him moving the... All right, so let's see it. Here we go. All right, let's see. 
No. <laughs> the luckiest man on the channel, Caleb Townsend, yet again. Mm -hmm. Caleb, he wins another one. He won the first, the first contest. And uh, he also, uh, well, he outbid everyone else on the Terzawola package during the first town hall. And this time, uh, Lady Luck was smiling on him again. Hopefully, it smiles on him on other more substantial ways in his life. But some, something tells me it, it is. Uh, I used to work with a, a guy, uh, God rest his soul, who, man, he, every, he'd walk into a room and he'd win a large screen, t large screen TV. I swear, this guy was the luckiest guy ever. Hey, Dave, great to have you here, sir. Uh, Dave was saying he wanted to do a video much like the um, much like the uh, Warren Cliff in my collection video, my my recent sub collection video, and I said please do. Uh, I'm gonna write here, right on the package. Caleb T, can't believe it. Caleb Townsend, my gosh, you're a, you're, you're all right, all right, all right, people. So that being said, let's move on. I want to say so. Uh, uh, I recently spoke with, uh, yeah, he's a lucky guy. Uh, or maybe it's not luck. Maybe it's somehow it's skill. Maybe it's the name Caleb just draws arrows to it. I don't know. I don't, It's a cool name. I used to have a friend named Caleb. Haven't seen him in a thousand years. Caleb, I hope you're well. Anyway, uh, so this past week I spoke with Matthew Christensen. And uh, so his, um, his interview show will be coming out on um, this coming Sunday. And what a cool, cool guy. Very interesting. And man, do I love the design of his knives. And uh, well, what do you know? He sent me, the, well, the whole time we're talking, he's playing with this, which is the prototype to his new Wii knife coming out uh, called the Thug. And uh, man, this thing lives up to its name. It's a beefy uh, little titanium frame lock on bearings. Um and thumb stud. And uh, I got to say, it comes in three colorations. It's going to come like this. Uh, it'll come with a uh, carbon fiber and then like this with a satin, I think. But this is the exact version I would like uh, were I to get this. And I think I will. Look at that. It's like kind of brushed horizontally all the way across, not only the frame. Let me see if I can get this, uh, but also the blade. What a cool, beautiful little Tanto knife. And, you know, I'm not I'm not so big into the little knives, but uh, this one, man, I really like this. And I've been carrying it. Usually people send me knives uh, for loan. I don't carry them, but this I couldn't resist. I, uh, I took it around with me a couple of days um, as tertiary carry, of course. And, uh, man, it's cool. It's a great little thing. Now, the one thing I would have to say about this is I'm curious as to whether in production format, this is the, the prototype, whether they will hollow out uh, any pockets in here to lighten up the, the uh, titanium handles. Because, you know, it's, it's, got, it's got a substance. Uh, as Jimmy Slash would call it, it's a pocket chunker for sure. It's got some, uh, it's got some real heft to it. But in a way, that's reassuring heft. And uh, thank you, Matthew. I'm sure you're probably not watching this, but man, I, I'm always blown away by people's generosity to 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 loan things out by the way this is really cool in the reverse grip this is a sub three inch blade here i mean god what a gorgeous looking blade but the handle is also really ergonomic even um for my medium sized hands i mean it's a small handle but i can still get four uh, fingers in there and i can get my thumb there you know if i need to open up an oil drum and release the doves that are within knife whisperer good to have you here sir i i have a knife you might want let's talk offline well hello boys and girls can't stay long but i wanted to pop in i'll def come back next thursday bobby well it's great to have you here joe joe frazier not the boxer but the man and the knife whisperer who's been putting out tons and tons of great videos definitely check out the knife whisperer hollywood tactical how you doing i plan on downsizing but it keeps <laughs> friggin growing well that's the thing Here's what happens. You know what? It's it's a lot like now. I don't have much personal experience with this, but this is how bodybuilders do it, right? They they eat tons of food and they and they lift 
lots of heavy, heavy weights, right? So they bulk up, they get huge. And, and some of that, uh, some of that hugeness is not what they're going for. It's kind of the fat layer, whatever. And then they go through a period after that, once they've put on the bulk and the hulking muscle and some fat, and then they go through that trim phase afterward, I, I think I've read about, and, uh, and they shed that so that all they have left is the muscle, right? So, so Hollywood Tactical, you're kind of still in the bulking up phase. Uh, uh, so so just keep up with the good nutrition and the heavy weights. And uh, and then eventually you'll know when it's time and you'll start to shed. And, and, and you'll get down to that lean exact spot you want to be in. Uh, Michael, of course, sir, you can always jump in. It'd be a pleasure to have you. So uh, yeah, please. Uh, Nick, I just spent over $200 on flashlights I don't need. <laughs> Olight is running a huge sale and definitely growing the collection. I need a second job. That's so funny. <sighs> That's so funny. Okay, so my mother and I were having a conversation today, and and um, you know there there are so many things that are in the same orbit as knives, flashlights, chief among them, and then also uh, watches. Kind of, and I, I love watches, and I could uh, you know if I were hey dark gravity, good to have you here, sir. And if I weren't careful, I could go down a dark, dark hole uh, of, of poverty going after watches. They're beautiful and so appealing. Same thing with flashlights, though I haven't been bitten by that flashlight bug. Oregon uh, Knife Guy says, I plan on growing the collection until I have to buy a new house just for my blades. See, those are real goals. Those are real collection goals. That's a person who is serious. Uh, so... Um, so, oh, geez, here, you know, I was off on a talking jag and, uh, well, I, I lost my train of thought with that last, uh, with that last lower third, someone will remind me and eventually, uh, we'll be off. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it does take some, some discipline to, to kind of cut it down. And, uh, so we're going to be talking about that uh, a little bit. Um, a couple of things I do want to talk about a couple of new releases. One of them mm, strikes a little close to home. It's the new K-Bar release. Um, and uh, Jim, feel free to bring in uh, Mike if he's in the green room. Chad says, I need to get rid of some knives and stop bidding on Tucson's. That sounds like a, that sounds like a, a, good, uh, a good thing to do. Hey, Mike, good to see you. Because Tucson's... Well, long time no see. Long time no see, sir. Hang on, let me just finish this thought. And I want to say it's a good idea to stop bidding on the Tucson's because they will never stop. They're relentless relentless they will never stop making things that you can buy that are sweet and cool is that a rambo mugshot t-shirt yes sir <laughs> i have one <laughs> it's one of the one of the best conversation starters uh out there i was uh, uh so i was waiting for one that i have from so aliens. The what? i have one that's got the chest burster from aliens <laughs> on nice I have some awesome, unique t-shirts. So, Mike Emler, how you doing, sir? I'm doing all right. I've missed the uh, the last couple. I had to watch them uh, after after everything was done. I've been uh, pretty busy. The daughter uh, got an injury, so we've been doing a lot of driving the hundred miles one way oh. to the uh, the U the U.S. team physician that's up in Laguna Hills. Oh, geez. For uh, for that. So, but no, it's been good. It's been good. Well, I hope sure. I hope her injury. Uh, writes itself out quickly, man. That's terrible. She was, she was actually able to jump uh, two days ago. She's she hasn't jumped on the ice for like two days, or I mean, wow. like uh, two months. I mean, she she started having this. She's got an MCL sprain. So anyone who doesn't but know Mike, you, you probably know him, but uh, I'll let you know who he is anyway. Uh, he is the proprietor of Crazy Sharp. He's a, a a killer sharpener and and a knife maker himself. He's got a uh, a uh, knife with we knife company right now called the stonefish and he's got the sea snake which is uh man a really killer neck knife coming out with uh artisan cutlery uh quite shortly october i have 10th. a video up. October, october 10th is the 10th. tentative release yeah and, and, that, and that's, that's gonna be a cool one because tell us, cutlery tell lover, us. well it, it's gonna be fun because cutlery lover got one um so I have, I've had my YouTube channel for, I don't know what, four years now, but a lot of the reason that I have a YouTube channel is I always watch Jeff Smith on Cutlery Lover and I love oh, yeah. his channel. I know that he stepped away from the knives for a while because it wasn't advertiser friendly, but he's got a half a million subscribers 
and he's got one and he's he's sitting there and i talked to him the other day and he's like i'm like sitting on my hands here i just need to know a release date he's like i don't want to do the video now and have it go up and then people forget about it he's like this knife could be great he's like i want to do the video while it's available and he's like yeah. that that'll optimize everything and i was like wow and you know i sent him a letter i gave him the knife as a gift the green what you had jeff yeah. smith got it right as a gift he's wearing it around his neck probably right now so. he is a neck knife connoisseur uh jeff yeah. from cutlery lover i'm sure most of you guys know who uh, cutlery lover is neck knife though guys like i honestly like everybody's like oh this is like the one of the coolest neck knives that's coming out i was like that's great it's a belt knife but if you want to call it a neck knife hey whatever sells it <laughs> well well but mike uh it, unless i'm mistaken and i could be though that's so rare um i feel like uh most people who have a fixed knife uh, fixed blade knife on them these days are are, are i could be wrong but a neck knife is where they're thinking first. Uh, I think a lot yeah. of people haven't gotten hip to just putting it in your front pocket, which I love. I love front pocket carry. Uh, I also love I neck like carry it. because I have to wear a, like a thing around loops. my neck at work. Yeah. You like the belt loops. Well, well, what I was getting ready to say is I actually have been, cause I've, I've been sick. My autoimmune disorder kicked in and I've, I've been, I've been stuck around the house, just kicking around in like basketball shorts and a t-shirt just, like two weeks, I really have not had any energy going on, had a lot of blood work and stuff done. I've been carrying this as a neck knife for like two weeks. And I'm like, you know what? It's it's pretty good as a neck knife. <laughs> even though that's not how it was designed. It never was intended to be a neck knife. It's light enough, even though it's a fairly large knife, it carries really well as a neck knife. Well, since that's, we're that's talking about it, it hold, it up, hold it up to the camera. To Let us... Uh, Mike, okay. hold it up to the camera while we're talking about it. Hold it up closer and horizontally, please. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that thing is super thin. It's super light. It's very, very, uh, it feels great in the hand. It's got that I, nice dripping on top, by the way. Uh, but w tell us about the steel again. Uh, it's ARRPM9. So I've gotten two emails total from artisan about the composition. There was a mistranslation. Um, so it, it's a steel. I think they're releasing or have released the composition. It's really, when you look at the composition, it's really similar to nine CR 18 MOV, but it's got cobalt and it's a powdered steel. And I'm not a big fan of 18 MOV. I really love this steel. I really do. It's way up there on my list of things that I, I like, and it, it's not so much that it, it holds an edge, so much better or anything like that. It's the fact that it'll get dull. I, I just hammered. Yeah. I, I was making some inserts, some copper insert pins for a knife I'm making. And I was like, oh, I'll just take this millimeter and a half copper wire and I'll cut it with both my Sea Snake and the CJRB Rhea. And I hammered it through one and a half millimeter copper wire. And I like, I didn't even have to resharpen it. Like I stropped the copper that was stuck mm. to the blade off of it can't even tell i did it and i was like man that is that is resilient and it strops right back up to hair popping edge but uh so it's, it's a so really nick, good viable field. nick was saying that he likes carrying his scandy uh tops around his neck but also on belt carry i know he posts that a lot and uh we also have a couple of other people adding knives uh to their to their blades uh, uh, adding blades to their knife collection uh you, Mike, were just recently talking about uh, uh, the, what is it? Not the cobalt. What the hell is it called? The new artisan uh, that everyone is going gaga over. It's a very plain. What's that? Is it the feldspar? The feldspar, yes. I knew it was like a stone or something. So what's your feeling about that? I, okay. So I actually have its cousin or basically like Dylan Mallier and I talked about this. These are like, like siblings fighting on the, on the playground. I have the Centros and the Feldspar here. I got a whole package of stuff from, from Artisan. I like the Feldspar because of its contoured handles and stuff like that. It's, mm -hmm. this is to me what, now you guys know, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm not a big fan of Benchmade's quality right now. Uh, I feel like this is, this is what the 
griptilian would be if it was done like a more consistent better it's it's a thinner grind it's a it's a i like the blade shape better um but i'm not gonna lie to you this is a great knife for all the buzz it's getting and i told dylan mallory this i like this better Which i like this this is the mallory design centros by cjrb oh okay and it is it is a lively little knife like this is not made to be a tactical knife but holy crap could this be a really good tactical knife uh nice and nice piercing tip nice belly good handles it, it's light it's heavy in the right places and light where it needs to be it's just about a perfect knife for this size and handles and everything I just wish I'm not a fan and, of anybody's pocket clips. I just wish to talk clips on every night They're better. <laughs> and uh, see, I know you mentioned that on the on the interview show. Uh, CJRB is the um, uh, high value brand associated with Artisan. Right? Yeah, it, like, it's right. Artisan's budget brand. And man, uh, so I, I happen I, to have I a CJRB it. right here. This Tala, what a great knife this is! It's like thirty five bucks. A nice little knife. It's it's this got thing. a weird. Like it looks weird, but in hand, once you get it, you're like, oh wow, yeah, that works. It's yeah. it's got a thing. Have you seen their new uh have you seen the uh I don't I think it's artisan, it might not be CJRB, which is their budget brand. Have you seen their great white, which is a Mike Gavco design? A Gav a Gavin oh, yeah, design? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That I've sharpened the actual custom versions of it they're great if it's if they translated his design well which they have been doing a good job of it's gonna be amazing i i happen to get lucky enough that i have one of their i have one of uh, artisans lesser known really nice knives that came in and that's oh, that's new that's not new this has been around for a while just no one's ever seen it it didn't get much publicity this is their uh, Mastiff, and it is. Man, if you watch the unboxing video stuff I got from CGRB, like you see my eyes, or when I got it from Artisan, um, you see my eyes light up the second I grab this. I'm like, oh, I like that. So I'm that's historic. why I thought it was new. I hadn't yeah. seen it until your video. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's that's pretty cool. So, so you're, uh, talking about value, you're talking about value options. I just yeah. actually am uploading a video right now that's 36 minutes long of me talking about value brands and how some of these budget knives like this are turning the knife industry upside down. This is a thirty-six dollar knife. Yeah, that's insane, man. Thirty-six bucks. Same thing with this. Uh, that this CJRB is really inexpensive, and it's so high quality. Hey, uh, so Dave, Dave just said he got the Gavco uh, Thresher today, made by uh, BRS. Have you experienced that yet? You know the Thresher. They made the Thresher, uh, dropped it a version of it, and dropped it a version of it. Here's what Mike. Mike has done when you talk about like he did the Thresher. And there's so many versions of it out there. He did the 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 uh, spinner with uh, Ferrum Forge, and like at the same time released one with uh, Custom Knife Factory that was almost oh, yeah. exactly the same. But also a spinner. He does variations with different companies. So I don't know if I've seen the BRS Thresher, but I'm going to tell you right now, all of the ones I've seen have been great. Like yeah, his knives are great. They're he designs. I mean, his designs are so. Uh, unique and beautiful and and seemingly functional. I've only ever had the uh, the Thresher. I had the drop version. It was a little crowded. Um, I got the one that For wasn't your... contoured. Yeah, and it seemed a little. Yeah. I would have liked the uh, the contoured one a little better. What's up? Um, it, I was say it can. Some of his designs can be crowded, especially if you've got larger hands. Like a lot of his knives don't fit my hands. Mm. But I've talked to Mike personally, and like I was telling him, I was like. One of the things that my, the new knife, the sea snake that I took from all of the things that I've heard Elliot and Mike talking about is Elliot and uh, Mike is constantly says, teen, teen Elliot, it must be teen. It must be teen to cut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was like, guess what, Mike? I made mine thin. That knife nice. is really thin. It cuts like a dream. Yeah. Oh and yeah. yeah it's, you're, you're talking about Mike, the sea Mike's snake. Really cool guy. Oh yeah. 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 Not, yeah, not I wanna... the stonefish. You know the stonefish is not. That's a beast. No, no, no. The stonefish is not, but it's also very sharp and it's a different kind of knife. 
it's yeah, uh it's bad. it's a it's a it's a utility kind of combat utility knife the way i see it's it a tactical, utility tactical kind of thing utility tactical. well check this out hey jim bring up the k-bar have you seen this so k-bar has done something that's been rattling around in my brain and actually uh i have a a couple of 3d animations of my own design of this right here but k-bar has uh is releasing their own tactical pizza wheel i don't know if you've seen that but uh it it it's their oh, K-Bar. I don't say things like that when I have a mouthful of beer. I almost oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, you know, pretty cool, I gotta say. And and so a couple of years back, I designed one that was really slick and uh and just cool as hell. And I had a graphics guy at work do this uh, little animation for me and and then I started doing this podcast and and that whole uh concept Not about it went by the wayside yeah and i saw this come up and i'm like i'll be damned they're like of course it's a it's an idea whose time has come and uh you know k-bar has the factory look at that i mean i love it i i want it i i had an idea that i did not capitalize on and i'm pretty upset about it because now i see things really similar i actually pitched it to someone i was in the navy i was young and i was like hey you know what everybody loves like what's your favorite part of cereal it's the milk at the end right <laughs> There's a lot of kids that don't like milk, but if you give them flavored milk that tastes like the cereals they love, like yeah. Fruit Loops milk, fruit, Fruity Pebbles milk, you know, all those things. And the guy looked at me like I was an idiot. And then my wife comes home when my daughter was a lot littler and she comes home with these crazy straws that are like, oh, it flavors your milk like your cereal. And I was like, these oh, jerks. Oh, God damn, son of a... <laughs> so, I, I'm glad I, I censored myself a little bit. These milk that's, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. they're concepts. They're just in the air. Well, uh, Dave, this old sword just said he's putting up his uh, his BRS Thresher uh, review up tomorrow. He wants you to check it out. So check it out, this old sword. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> this old <laughs> tactical ice cream. Yeah, that's what they need next. I'm dyslexic. I have to. I have to. I have to focus really hard when I'm reading something. I'm dyslexic. I'm lying. I just don't read well. Kbar also made a tactical ice scraper. That's right. They also I have a. Have a they also have a shoulder-mounted uh, a um, a popcorn thrower that throws popcorn at immense speeds. You know, like will injure people. It's a pretty amazing uh, thing. Do you know what What's I had it? that I wish I'd never gotten rid of? I gave it to a friend as a gift. He took it downrange with him. I haven't talked to him in years. Do you remember the old Kershaw boot knife that came with the, yes. the shoulder harness? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I have one of those. I love that, and I gave it to a friend thinking I could get one. I have not seen one in years, and it was the it was really plain Jane. It was it was a, a single piece blade construction it had been milled yes. out where the handle scales yep. were like glued in and, and then pinned. And the sheath had so a little like, locking mechanism. It yeah, like locked lock in. Where yeah. it, you had the loops and you could hook it to your belt. I wish I'd never gotten rid of one of those. Yeah, uh, United yeah. Cutlery made a an even cheaper one of those, and I have okay. I. I and my good friend had one of those, and now it actually resides in our downstairs bathroom, just in case. Give me uh, a moment. My my wife just walked in with a pouch full of paperwork and stuff, and asked me if I. Well, so uh, paperwork has no place on this show, but I know that Mike's gonna work it out. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? Are you What's here happening? with your... Dude, I I know a lot's happening on your front. Yeah, yeah, I've been uh, I've been busy, man. Happy Thursday night knives, sir. Happy Thursday night knives. You got it. So I just figured I'd pop in, say let's hello. Like, yeah, let's and, see. What uh, got. And show off some uh, some wares from the last week. Um, I've got a few to show you. So let's if you want to dive right in, we'll start with this guy. Hmm. What the hell is that, man? I love it. Right? Oh, good gravy. Good gravy. So this thing's impressive. And um, it's so cool that the maker sent this handwritten uh -oh. note. And uh -oh. I wanted to just kind of read it because it tells us about the knife a little bit. Sure. It says, thanks for being patient purchasing one of my handmade folding knives. I hope you'll enjoy using it. You can always contact me with comments and questions about the knife. The name of this knife model, and I'm going to pronounce this as the best of my ability, Boomob. B O U R M A U D Boumont is the last name of a French farmer that gave the first that got the first one as a gift. 
Oh, that's um, cool. This knife can be disassembled using one T8 screwdriver on this side, and it has the carbon fiber collar around it. Mm. Atten uh, attention, the pivot pin, it, the pivot side right here, the pivot pin is glued into the carbon fiber handle. The steel 1.4528 has almost the same composition as Bowler N690, but is made by Lohmann in Germany. So this dude's work is unbelievable. The hand ground satin is fantastic. This spidey hole and the access, look at the access to the lock bar. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's awesome. And it, I mean, it's on phosphor bronze washers. And I mean, the thing's action is superb. This carbon fiber is second to none. Some of the best I've God, seen. That's beautiful. And um, I mean, look at the size of the hardware he's using on this thing. It is, it's got a um, OD G10 backspacer a 3d milled clip that rides really nice and deep in, in the pocket. Very little of it, you know, whoops. Let's see if I can get my angles, right? Probably about that much is exposed. Not much at all. Um, and the jimping is done just right where it's like really nice and fine. It's close together and it's not too deeply cut. So it just gives you just enough mm -hmm. traction. That blade shape is so cool. Tell us this guy's name again and how you found him. So um, a buddy of mine had this piece. He's This is a hobbyist maker out of Belgium, and uh, his name is Simon Strikers is his name. So you can find him on Simon Strikers on Instagram, and uh, you can see his stuff. But he does such good work. Like, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but this pin right here on the inside of the knife – I don't know if I'm going to be able to somehow get the angles right. Is like a hinderer lock bar stabilizer on the yes, side. Okay. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it through the scale. Yeah, he uses a, a really large oversized detent ball that's ceramic, and so the the engagement of the lock bar disengagement and the way it sits mm -hmm. in the detent and then the the detent is just so crispy. So, I guess the best thing I could compare it to is like a super high end version of a sleesh bowie mm -hmm. kind of um and i love it and this just came in today and i mean this thing was under 600 bucks table Jeez. so you know it's a as far as i'm concerned this uh this is remarkable so that's a, that's a beauty hey ryan before you move on to the next one yeah uh, tell everybody about uh a the videos you've been doing recently with jared neve which have been awesome and yeah. then also you've been doing tons of live videos on I instagram have. just let everyone know about that yeah for sure so um jared neve lives close to me jared and kara and i like that what they do and their banter back and forth reminds me a lot of my me and my wife and so it's it's pretty funny um and I get a kick out of it and I like them. And Jared's a great sharpener to boot. So mm -hmm. um, I told Jared, you know, I've been kind of meeting up with him every now and again, just to pass off some of my knives because, you know, I, they don't have the means to buy some of these high end things and customs and stuff as a lot of people don't. So I figure if I can meet up with them and give them a couple of my customs to check out at a time um, and they could do a review on their channel, that's awesome. And at the same time, Hey, hey guys. <laughs> and then while I meet up with them, we go to lunch, hang out, have a beer or something. And then we'll go to a local park or whatever and shoot, you know, shoot a video about something or other. And we don't really have a plan going into it. We just kind of pick a topic and I just kind of ramble. You guys are really good together in those videos. Uh, 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 yeah, I really, I really enjoy their videos and to have you uh, in the mix is awesome. And then, uh, and then really quickly, uh, before you move on to your next knife, uh, your Instagram stuff, sure. uh, you've been doing those live videos. Tell yeah, us I've them. been doing just to some of the joy of, of getting stuff right is unboxing it. And I feel like unboxing live is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing Instagram feeds when I get um, some new grail calls you know, as I refer to them and, uh, and share that with people with kind of my first impressions and unboxings. Um, and then secondly, I've been popping on to do a couple different things. One is like a, a custom maker deep dive mm. where we're talking a little bit more in depth about an individual maker, um, or an individual topic that excites me. Um, and I've been kind of just popping on talking, you know, talking knives live. 
And I just learned how to post it to IGTV. So you can go check out some of those on, on Instagram TV um, that I've popped on there as recordings like the unboxing today that I did. Um, I did two today and you know, different live segments. And uh, I've been I probably did three or four this past week and probably three or four the week before. So it's pretty regular. Nice. Nice. All right. So before we get to, I know what you're going to show us. Let me, uh, let me uh, greet Dave. Dave, it's great to have you here, sir. How are you? Happy Thursday night knives. Bob. Happy Thursday night knives. Uh, Dave is this old sword on YouTube. He's been doing, uh, he's been doing a lot of cool stuff, showing off a lot of uh, knives that'll, that uh, are off the beaten track, way in the tactical realm. Okay, so that's the BRS uh, uh, gap that we're Mike. talking about. That's a beauty. Okay, so I haven't seen that one. So that's a Gavco BRS. That's a yeah, it's four a, inch blade, Mike. It's like stretched out by a half an inch, right? Yeah, looks like a, like looks like a that's, thresher. That's a nice looking knife. Or a tiger. Yeah. Is that his tiger model? No, that's uh, the that's thresher. The, the thresher, the thresher oh, that's yeah. The thresher, okay. But is okay. So the question I've got about that is, how much better is it than the mass drop version of the Thresher? I is wish it I like had the leaps mass drop version to compare. Um, uh, it's okay. not. It's not as smooth, Mike. It's uh, it won't huh. drop shut. And what they uh, did. Trash. The purpose I get one, sometimes that's a good thing. They put a T eight. Yeah. They put a T eight on each side. And a lot of thread locker. Oh, okay. so it's free okay. spinning. So I already started munging up the screws, and I said, "Forget it. I'm just going to uh, leave it for now." I hate that. I, I really have don't you, like. Have you done the torch? Have you done the the propane torch? Just hit it with a propane torch till it's hot enough. You just can't touch it, but not enough. Yeah, it, I'm going to get there yeah. and then pop it loose. I'll be anodizing yeah, the titanium. If, do do that. Right. I'll, if I'll that doesn't work, you can the the titanium. Titanium. hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, we can't both talk, Dave. If I put too much heat on it, I'm going to change the color, Mike. Ah, yeah, Mike. That's well. I, like I was saying, you could put a little bit of heat on it before it changes yeah. the color. When you start seeing a little bit of smoke like come off of it, then stop and then take a T8 bit, put it yeah. in, and yeah. smack it with a back of a <laughs> or smack the back of it with a hammer, and it'll break that thread locker loose. I, I every one I've told Brian they do this every time I've taken apart when he was. I was like Brian. Like it's you don't have to put it on like you're buttering bread. I taking your knife <laughs> no, with a soup grind. Yeah, just that. Yeah. But, so uh, take Brian. You don't. You shouldn't need impact wrenches to take apart a knife. <laughs> uh, so Ryan, let's let's see the uh, let's see what you got next. Well, I'll finish with the folder. I'll, I'll do a couple fo uh, more folders and then I'll do the last one. I got a, a couple more to show you guys. So this is a beaut. Uh, this is a Brian Efros custom, hmm. and this is his uh, collab that he did um, a series of customs for Triple Lot Design. Oh, okay. So this is a, a TAD, and it's called the Ice T. So this is a CTS XHP steel blade, dark wash, um, tumbled finish on the scales, acid wash, tumble blade, and uh, and an orange peel, orange peel textured Efros clip and um the the these are tie connector does the pivot and the studs and the backspacers mm -hmm. um and i know nick swan did the cnc milling for the raw handles but the the rest of everything was done by brian efros and um, it's those three grooves in the handle that make it a tad right correct this is on ceramic bearings with a ceramic detent and i mean this thing's actions incredible and this Tonto blade shape, I really like these American Tontos, yeah, a lot. I think they're very functional, and that's a but, pretty subtle one too. But but it has the uh, yeah the hallmarks. It's got the two tips and the two you know cutting edges. Yep, I like that. This that's, is really that's sharp. More, that's more feels like traditional great. Traditional style Tonto, to tell you the truth. I mean, it is. It does have the the hallmarks of an Americanized Tonto, yeah. but it is way more traditional than it is the this like the cold steel. Sure. Too distinct. That's a, that's a nice looking knife. I bet that thing cuts like a dream. Um, it's it's got a flat grind that goes about three about three quarters of the way up. If you can see that, a little yeah, maybe yeah. further, maybe eighty yeah. percent. And that's but the flat grinds are nice. The plunges are perfectly symmetrical, and it does get nice and thin. It's probably about twelve thousandths at the heel, and and then about gets to about 
16 to 17 right here at the, this like second Tonto tip and then gets to about 25 all the way up that, that Tonto. So it's got good geometry for sure. Nice. nice. <clears throat> so this, this one, yeah. uh, this one, man, you sent me a picture of this. Everything about this is just so cool, including that odd looking shield, the crazy like. Well, sorry. Go ahead. Open it up. Let's see that sucker. That's so cool. this is a spectacular piece. The walk and talk is unbelievable on this thing. So this is a um, bird vis. Mm. The like you can kind of see it on there. His logo with a feather. But bird vis knives. You can follow him on Instagram. His name is Nick. This dude is so stand up. And I mean, you could tell he takes so much pride of ownership in his business and in his craftsmanship. This I'm telling you for a modern traditional slip joint, it doesn't get any better. His hand rub satin's incredible on this CPM 154 blade and his grind work is stupendous yeah. and his seamless. I mean, everything, it, it looks like one piece. You can't, you can't even make out the back spring. It's just incredible. Um, yeah. The whole thing's seamless. But this is called his regular Hitchcock. This is a Hitchcock model. Um, it's full four finger grip for me on this thing, uh, but it's just the right size. And it's, look at this. This it's just so snappy. Yeah, man, I'm in a, I'm in a serious uh, slip joint phase again. And Are you? when I saw that, I was like, oh, God. Ugh. So quick story on this. So when I went to um, buy my first bird vis, I saw on his Instagram, he posted one up. And I was like, oh, my God, it's delightful. I want it. He's like, I'm posting it on, on my website. You know, first come, first serve is how all of his stuff works on his website, birdvisknives.com. So I went on there. I, I was spamming refresh. <laughs> like the whole time and i grabbed it and i bought it and i was like yes and i messaged him on instagram and he was like dude i i don't know what to do he's like my website glitched it sold to two people <laughs> the same exact second so i was like dude don't sweat like give it to the other person you and i will work something out downstream make me a better it. one <laughs> whatever and he was like dude thanks for being cool tell me what materials you want and i'll put it next on my bench i was like Oh, well, so I picked these materials. You got brown cross-cut micarta here mm. with an orange and ivory pinstripe separating them, as well as the kind of orange G G10 pinstripe as a kind of liner here. Yeah. And then OD micarta normally, so non-cross-cut as the bolster. God. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. I love that blade shape too. It's like a it's a sheep's foot, but with a little menace at the end. Totally. Hey Ryan. Hey Ryan. You you got you got the same deal from him that I got from Mick Strider, but actually I wound up making out. So when I was at the Cali Custom yeah. Show, I fell in, I fell in love with this knife, and it's a it's a Mick Strider handmade custom, and an I was going to pick or an SMF. Up. Huh? Is that an SNG or an SMF? SMF. So I kind okay. of fell in love with the knife, and I was going to get it for the channel, and so I was second place. The guy that was in first place decided he wanted the knife, but he was also one of the their vendors. Okay. And so Mick, Mick offered us both. He's like, whichever one of you will Roger up and say, you'll take it. I will make the other one, a knife, almost identical, really similar. And I was like, uh, I was like, I mean, I'm cool with that. But the guy basically stepped down and, and said, yeah, you know what? I'm a vendor. I can get one of these anytime. And uh, Mick was cool enough. Mick was cool enough to do that for me. He's like, he went over and talked to guys like, Hey, the guy that's in second place hey, Dirk. wants the knife. And he was that's like, awesome. that's, he was Look, like, that's really somebody, cool. When somebody has that level of integrity, it means they're in it for the long haul and they're the type of maker right. I want to do business with. And I, also I mean, so I'm a, I'm a lifer with Nick for sure. A yeah. After handling the product, seeing his quality and pride that's he takes in his business and his craftsmanship, I'm a, I'm a lifer there. And it, he also has, they come with these beautiful leather slips. So nice. um, just an awesome, awesome package. This was uh, right about 750 bucks. So, you know, it's, it's not like you're buying a Bill Rupel or going crazy like that. But I, I think the quality is 
dollar price point to quality is is absolutely there and beyond in my opinion i love right. bill rupel that dude is so much fun to talk to at knife shows bill is yeah, dude, great for sure i i had a i had a question for you though because yeah. i was thinking about it. i made this knife for myself with no intention of selling it, but I was going to see, because I know that you're friends with Neves, I'm shipping him something. Would you like me to send this one out? You got to keep in mind, I made this for myself. So it's not going to be as, I'm not going to be as strict with some of the things. Like I let myself slip on some of this. I don't own any of my own custom knives. Would you be interested in seeing this knife if I send it to Neves to, to hand yeah, off to you? Yeah, one sure, of, of course. Of yeah, of course. Either when we get together yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Only one in wood handles. I've never yeah. made one with wood handles before. That's awesome. That was yeah. I'd, I'd I'd be honored for sure. While we're talking about fixed blades, <sighs> so um, oh. came in a beautiful. A I was going to say I knew exactly <laughs> what that was. I'm trying to beautiful talk. pouch. Oh. Um, so I won this, here. and here's actually it's pretty cool. He sends it with some cool patches and swag and stickers. But here was the, the lotto number that I got pulled, right? <laughs> Spirited Blades, paid, blah, blah, blah. So he does a he does these virtual shows since he can't attend really many live shows, if any. Um, he's been doing these virtual shows with him and his wife, Suze, and they are hysterical. This one, they hired a couple bikini babes to hang, <laughs> out, to hang out in their bikinis at their pool. It was a pool party. Right. <laughs> and uh, they just had a ton of fun, and, and they're a riot. And... Uh, Anyway, I am so honored and privileged to own this. This is um, a Bob Terzuola custom battle guard, his M30 battle guard. God, that's oh. a nice knife. Yeah. Oh. There's a teeny bit of that. The Kydex is pretty fresh, so. You're oh, right. Boy, oh, boy, this thing is miraculously I good. I, I, I lucky, lucky bump. He handed the Kydex for these. I didn't know Bob Terzuola invented the tech lock. So oh, that new. Oh, he didn't. No, I had no idea. Yeah, no, he said it on the on the on his virtual show that this was a product of his. This was an innovation of Bob Terzuola, which is cool. I did not know that. Is so, that a fully sharpened top edge? Um, no, 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 it's just so perfectly ground as a hollow, and at. What is he? Eight is 78, 79, 80, uh, somewhere in that area. This dude, I don't know, but Bob, Bob's oldest son was like my age, I think. So, like, yeah, he'd have I to think be he's probably about, about 80 that. now. And yeah, I'm telling you, it's like he hasn't skipped a, a gosh darn beat with this thing. Well, no, he's, um, just, he's a I, you know, he's an artist, and artists only get better until this they... is ready to go to this is ready to go to war or battle yeah. or underwater diving team or you know, demolitions team or. What, it's unbelievable the weight right. thing thing and that the thing is crazy. Ryan, hey, hey Dave, what what's up? I got the boot version of that knife thirty years ago. What? I got the boot version of that thirty really? years ago. That's why that handle looks so familiar to me. As soon as you had it in the sheath, and I had several of Bob's knives that I bought from a guy in Connecticut by the name of Kenefick. Okay. And Kenefick was a big, big, big Randall dealer. In fact, I had what they called the Sasquatch awesome. Bowie. Oh, you have the Sasquatch, the, the 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 Randall Sasquatch. Yeah. Holy shit! So, so do you still have uh, your? I don't have any of this. Do you have the boot version of this uh, nope. Terzuola here? It, nope. I think it was about a hundred fifty dollar knife at the time. <laughs> well, yeah, this was not one hundred fifty dollars. You can't touch a Terzola badge for 150 so Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Well, you sold it for cool. some CDs, right? You sold it so for some Duran Duran CDs. Titanium <laughs> pin, titanium lanyard hole. Mm. And then um, here, do you see that divot in the in the black micarta? Yeah, is that what locks it into the sheath? That's exactly That's what it is. There's a nipple. Yep. There's like a nipple on this. Sorry for flicking everybody off. There's a nipple on here. Yeah. And it's really <laughs> cool. I mean, as you as you insert this thing, it has terrific, super clean retention. And then to release it, you just have to release the, it's hard to do facing the camera, but you just use your thumb against the Kydex. Push and it against just, it. Yeah, it just pops right out. That's of cool. It. Cause I was wondering what was holding it in because you could see when you were holding it up before you drew the blade. Yeah. 
excuse me, that it didn't have any Kydex molded over the hilt. That's right. Uh, like you'll often see. And uh, I, and I, I thought, surely it's not a spring like in those old Glock field knives from the yep. 80s, like those Austrian field knives, because that that just totally jacks up your knife every time you pull. So, so I was wearing this around on my belt today and it was uh, it was very comfortable and uh, it's a great size. But the thing, you know, I can't I watch a lot of Forged in Fire because, well, it's awesome. And I'm sure we all do. Oh, yeah. And um, man, I was just the whole time, every time I handle this, I'm like, God, why isn't Doug Markita here? God, <laughs> 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 like, I want him to hold this and stab a pig like yes. 100 times. Does that be yeah. awesome? Yeah. It's just oh my perfectly, God. perfectly weighted. Like it, it doesn't feel like it feels like it could be all titanium or something. It, it's that's, perfectly balanced. That's the model he developed when he was in Guatemala, right? For the for yes. the whomever he was making that's, them for. That's right. Yeah. This God, is the M30 yeah. Battle Guard. This is one of his original models that he made down in Guatemala. Um, he did these, all of his fixies that he was selling, he called field grade. So, which is the only style, Bob, I probably really love the most. Fancy's mm -hmm. cool, but yeah. field grade for me, it's just black micarta, titanium, and an S30V, CPM S30V blade. Right. So I I'll actually got to handle that knife before you won it. Why? You know, I'm afraid Bob, Bob lives. Bob just doesn't, Bob doesn't live real far away from me. I got to handle that knife when it was still. Oh, did you really? Before, yeah, I got to handle that knife before it was completely done. Bob's a friend of mine. Like I've, I've got pictures of me. With, I love that dude. That dude is great. Taught me one of the best like grinding knives. I had yeah. already been making knives for about a year. And Bob walks into the, at the shop at Ferrum Forge and he's watching me grind a knife and I'm complaining because I'm getting weirdness on the blade. And he goes, stop moving your shoulders. He's like, plant your feet, shift your yeah. hips. Your body doesn't move in a straight line unless you move your hips. I finished that knife that night. And I was like, Dramatic, huh? Ten second talk with that man took a a knife that could have would have probably been like a piece of crap that I threw on the roof, and turned it into a knife that I turned around and sold for six hundred dollars because I completely was able to fix my grind issues. And then sure. I don't know if you guys saw. Did you guys get to see the giveaway I did on my on my channel? This oh yeah, the first knife I, I I finally got this. It's going out the door. This is the first knife I ever made. It was all actually hand forged, and I did a. A recurve on it and i was doing a recurve you're talking about that and i was i was thinking about that knife and i was like yeah if it hadn't been for bob i would not have been able to make knives like like i oh, said thank make you the thank you i mean i didn't think i had that much of an impact but not oh, you know about bob oh, okay. Go. okay i got two you. things i learned from, from his blade his virtual blade show he just did um one was that he invented the tech lock and it was, i didn't know before and two is that uh, Bob Loveless taught him how to hollow grind? Mm. Yeah, a gentleman you might know. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and it's evident here. Like I was saying, at at about eighty years old, uh, don't quote me on it. Seventy six. Okay, thanks for seventy six. Somebody Perfect. just put it up because I forgot that I had two of his knives that came in. One that was my buddy Nico's, and one that was another guy that I knew that had picked one up at Blade Show or I'm sorry, yeah. a California Cup show. Last year was his 75 for 75. He made 75 knives. Right. Awesome. 75 ATC. And every one of them had a diamond. Every one of them had a diamond right. set in somewhere. Yeah. And so I got to see two of those knives, which there's only 75 of them that are out there. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Love that old his, dude. His plunges, his plunges are spot on. I mean, as perfect as they get on the top and, and you know, the primary grind and on the top switch. So, I'm very, very impressed. I'm incredibly lucky to have been pulled for the lotto out of everybody that was going in for it and very fortunate. So that's nicely uh, done, got, sir. That's it. You gotta that's it. That that's all the girl on the channel. You gotta all right, put that, right. I gotta put that on the channel. Hang on. Uh, so before before you go, Ryan, uh, yeah. the main topic of the evening, I just want to get your take. I want to hear what you have to say about it. But uh, are you downsizing? or growing your collection. I happen to be doing both simultaneously. Yeah. Uh, how about you? How's, how's that going for you? Um, I love this topic and I should probably stick around longer to discuss it, but <laughs> well, that, um, let's hear it. I've, I've been, you know, I've, I've been on both sides of that pretty frequently. Right. And I go through phases right now. 
Um, as you can tell by the fact that I have four brand new product uh, items that I'm showing everybody, and I've got another one coming for next week's mail call that I'm going to be very excited about as well. I've definitely been more, I've been acquiring more, but I have been moving a few um, as well. So you know, I've probably got six coming in in the last two weeks and I probably have three or four going out. So, you know, it's always kind of a bit of a balancing act for me because I have to keep myself in check that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. It's the only way I can I can I can do it. Um, but I like experiencing new makers. I would never have found this if I wasn't diving around trying to find you know what's next and what's cool out there. And um, you know now I've got somebody else to look to, and I wouldn't have had an unbelievable experience with, and get to know Nick at Birdvis if it wasn't for seeking that out and trying it. So I'm all about trying stuff, and if the right thing is in front of me. Um, and I know it's going to be right for me. I go ahead and I do it. Um, and I really don't think too many, too many, I don't think about it too much. You know, and I don't then, know. And, it. and then maybe you, uh, after the purchase, what, what I will find myself doing is, especially if I'm looking for something on the secondary market, I find it, I'll go for it in the moment. And then, and then I'll, I'll back justify it and, and then figure out what I can get rid of to sort of make up for it. Yeah. Um, if I, if I have time enough to assess, you know, after I've received it and I assess it and I figure out, okay, here's kind of how it belongs for me. And does it really have a place? Does it not have a place? What kind of joy do I get out of it? And, and there might be something else. And I'm like, you know what? I, I've had a buddy knocking down my doors because he's wanted to experience the joy of, of something that I have, you know? And sometimes for me, it, I take just as much pleasure in watching someone else be happy, you mm -hmm. know, as I do getting something. So, um, you know, a big part of enjo my enjoyment in the hobby is also watching other people enjoy it and seeing <laughs> them flourish in it as well and grow from it. So, you know, um, I love both sides of it and, and there I have reasons for both, I guess. So acquisitions. Yes. Um, downsizing, man, not really, <laughs> down, not really <laughs> downsizing more like, you know, evolving, refining as, as, evolving, uh, refining. as Epic snuggle bunny said, Andrew tool says as an enthusiast, it's more about experiences, experiencing as much as I can than just accumulating a ton of pieces. That's helped me hone in on my preferences and allow me to build a smaller collection of gems. Andrew, I know what you're saying. Um, uh, however, well, not however, I know what you're saying, and uh, that's something I've gotten to, but only going through a stage where I was feeling like, uh, and, and this wasn't a conscious way of thinking, but I was kind of like, well, it's only responsible for me as a knife collector to have a sample of this kind of knife and this kind of lock and that kind of steel and this kind of steel. And it started to become the Bob DeMarco Museum of <laughs> Knives and not my own collection, you know, kind of uh, wheedle down. So uh, what I'm what I'm saying, Andrew, is getting uh, involved in a pass around group is great for that because I've had an opportunity to check out some knives and uh, experience them, you know, like an uncle, and then send them back after the after the fun afternoon with your with your niece and nephew. You know, it's kind of the same thing. It's like so don't hey, have to before before I get forget Ryan. Can you can you DM me the info about that knife? I I am not a fan of the sleesh buoy, but I definitely find that to be up my alley. I like that. And you're talking about a full I'm telling you, I'm so impressed. $500, $500 range on that? You said this, that that was like $500 and it's a full custom? This is a full custom by Simon Strikers. And okay. um, and it. I think his table price was right around $560, $575. Can you DM me that info? My wife's going to hate me for it, but I got a sneaking suspicion that something's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And I know he's a hobbyist. He's not a full-time maker. He's not even a part-time maker, you know, but I wish he were. <laughs> After experiencing this, I want more. So Dave, downsizing or growing, Dave, I know what you're doing. You're growing, man. Your collection is, yeah. is boundless. Here's the thing. I got a long history with this. Um, I started collecting back in the late 60s. Oh, geez, man. So I'm dating myself, right? Um, an interesting story is, and I'll answer your question in a moment. Um, I was going to school out in Santa Barbara, California in the late 60s. 
and I walk into a hardware store, saw a knife I really liked. Um, it was a dagger, you know, kind of like a commando dagger, uh, looked like a Randall number two, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I picked it up for 35 bucks. It ends up being a John Nelson Cooper. I don't know if that name's familiar. I don't, I don't know John Nelson Cooper, but now I should know. You look, look it up. He's right in there with, uh, with, with the, uh, the, the grandfathers, shall we say, of this uh, knife modern knife making trade. Um, so um, yeah, just look him up, and uh, he made a very simple knife. He was the first one to solder his guards mm. on the blade, so there was no gap for blood or debris to get in. So anyway. I've got about 200 at the moment, and um, I'm trying to downsize, but I keep seeing things that interest me. But the problem is right now I've got a collection of probably 30 budget blades that really don't interest me anymore, some Kubis and whatnot. Mm -hmm. They're very nice knives. They're, they're excellent performing knives. And I'm still picking up a um, one of these guys every now and then. Uh, Tucson? You guessed it, right? Yep. And see, it's got my name on it. Oh, right on. Huh? <laughs> well, so how do you get rid of it? You said, you said you got a bunch of knives you want to start getting rid of, these 30 budget knives. How do you, you know, get rid of the budget ones? The, I mean, the, surest, the surest way seems to be to eBay them, as much as that sounds like a sin. Uh, because I can, I can always get rid of them on eBay and sell them like new or, you know, like new in the box. Right. And get um, get seventy five percent of what I pay for them. You know, I tried uh, blade forums. I'm just not getting any response on blade forums anymore. The community is the blade forums community has changed a lot. It, in, yeah. in in what way? What way would you say? With the emergence of social media platforms, blade forums has really become more of a. Well, first of all, there's a whole lot less activity and less people that are using it in general. So I think that's one of the biggest things that impact it. And secondly, um, I think that, you know, it's a good place if you want to put some Chris Reeve on there. Mm -hmm. Those same. Yeah, I was gonna say, the, Benzes, the Benzes always sell on, on there. Yeah. That, but yeah. besides Chris Reeve, I mean, maybe Bussy Combat still has a following on there, you know. Um, it's, but it's, like you said, general, it's not old, anywhere near as much anywhere near as much yeah it's just you know, the emergency it, it, social media instagram facebook facebook groups are probably one of the biggest reddit is one of the biggest for especially if you're moving budget or low price stuff reddit is probably one of the biggest ones that's good to know yeah i wouldn't have suspected For, that forums kind of forums kind of went away because there's so much more social media interaction now i mean yeah Forums were great. Like I still go to the forums. The forums, like Blade Forum, has basically turned into a historical database. Like if I've got a question yeah. about a knife yeah. that maybe what deal it was, I still know that it's there. But the fact is, like to to be active on Blade Forums, it, it's almost like M it's like the MSN Messenger of knives. <laughs> and That's funny. AOL, AOL, Instagram. I, I have. Uh, really, like, there's so much more that you can do on yeah. YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, where where you're putting up videos. And it's Pre more presumably, presumably yeah. Mike, but I've only ever had luck. I've only ever sold knives on blade forums. I'll put up an, really? a knife video on I'm YouTube. And nothing. Same thing on YouTube, Instagram. YouTube is a bad nothing. selling platform. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, Unless you got a, a trillion followers and uh, yeah. Instagram, uh, yeah. Oh, Instagram is okay, but you have to have a following base to get to reach anybody. Uh, Lindy, Lindy Lou says, definitely check out knife underscore swap. There's a huge market. That's out. Reddit. Is that Reddit? Reddit? Yeah. Reddit okay. is where it's at. Reddit is the new knife forums, basically. God, I'm such an old man. I don't yeah. even know what the hell Reddit, Reddit is. Man. Reddit's the biggest one by a landslide. Why am I the why am I the big picture right now? Why am I the big window? But yeah, USN, like USN gathering, USN forums, you you know, that yeah, just I mean, there there are archives, you know, that are really cool. But and so, is, US, is USN gone? Is USN a thing yeah, of the past? I mean, it, some people are still on there, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's if you're a old timer, like I'll use Tom Mayo as an example. <laughs> like Tom doesn't <laughs> use. 
<laughs> Sorry, Tom. I mean, Tom, I, 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 I wouldn't be shocked if Tom still uses a flip phone. <laughs> so, you know, like he doesn't, you know, if you buy a knife from Tom, you have to send him a check in the mail or a money order. There's, there's, you know, he doesn't know how to use PayPal or I don't Venmo trust or, new stuff. Know. Yeah. It's just not, not so he's on US. He's on the USN. So, you know, he's got a forum on there. Yeah. So, you know, you can follow, you can follow guys like that in there, but that's about it. Tom hey, is one uh, of the best guys to hang out with a knife show because that dude always has, always has got really expensive whiskey and is always willing to pour you a glass. You come up, you're like, hey, what's up, Tom? He's like, oh, I haven't seen you. He's like, let me see your new knife. How's that plunge? And you're like, he's looking at it. He goes, what number is this? I'm like 150. He goes, you're getting there. Good for he's like, I better pour you a whiskey. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> getting like, there. You're like, you're getting there. He's like, yeah, just, He's like, you hey, know, they Dave. say it takes 700 to, to master it. And he goes, I, I'm curious what your 700 looks like. It's like your punch uh, yeah. is pretty good well, at 100. Michael <laughs> Raymond, Michael Raymond yep. and Tom Mayo are still the two that are the only two I know that get freehand plunges correct 100% of the time. They're just they're just nailing it. Zen Masters, Dave, yeah. was that a was that a wee band you were holding up? Uh, Brian Slicey Dicey made me buy this. Band. How, do you, how do you like it? I love it. I don't like small knives. Which one is great. that? That's the banter. That's the Ben banter. Yeah, designed by Ben from uh, formerly ben of... Uh, yeah. Ben Peter. Of, what's his name? Blade ben HQ. Peter. Yeah, Blade HQ. Yeah. Blade it's, HQ. Yeah, that's, that's a good, that is a good knife. Nice broad blade, nice thin. Yeah, that's a good knife. It's light. It's um, been my EDC for a couple of days. Oh, nice. I, I know his one of his stipulations with his knives, he loved the blue, but also he loved a blade that was short enough that he could extend his finger to the end. That's right. He would always it. talk about that. Yeah. Nice thing have, if you got big, got it really doesn't matter. This. Big knife is. Yeah. <laughs> he has longer fingers than me, Bob. <laughs> Wait, what is that you got there? Right. Oh, yeah. I forgot to show you guys this. This is another one that that came in uh, since the last time. So no, we saw this last time. No, that was a time. duck wing. Oh. That was the small. That was the small three inch version. This is a three and a half. <laughs> okay. God, look at that. Wow. This one is OD micarta zirc. Jeez. Zirconium studs, zirconium collar, OD micarta. Those are really cool it. thumb studs. Put put that up really close to the. He, he custom turns these on a lathe. Those are so cool, man. Those are they're the best they like the market. He also makes his like own in house in house phosphor bronze um, washers hmm. that are inset and in, they like inset into the scales and they're thick. They're like they're the same thickness as bearings. His phosphor bronze washers. So this is actually fit that I can replace the the phosphor bronze washers with the bearings. So that's kind of cool. I can swap them in and out. But this these phosphor bronze. Look at this action on phosphor bronze. I mean, I hardly have to move the thing. It's it's the best phosphor bronze action I've ever felt. Beautiful, beautiful knife. I you like said that. Action. So this is Cody Utzler is the maker. The blade is an S90V. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, here's what we're going to do for Knife Fight tonight. I realize uh, tonight I had it scheduled, uh, the Tanto versus Warncliffe, but I, I realized we did that last time, and I lost so miserably that I think that's why I wrote that down tonight. I, I think somewhere inside I wanted to do it over again. We already did that, and uh, so that is water under the bridge. But tonight, since you had, uh, Ryan, since you had out that incredibly beautiful slip joint, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the maker's Bird, name. Birdvis. 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 Gorgeous Birdvis. Birdvis. I've seen that stuff before. It's gorgeous. And I, in contrast, have been on a little Rough Rider kick, which is the whole opposite end of the Birdvis. Look at that. Yeah. That's gorgeous. I like his little uh, leaf logo. Yeah, I've been on a I've been on a little like, geez, how many Rough Riders can I get for seventy bucks? Kind of trip. And uh, this is the first I've had of these Rough Rider knives, and uh, they're interesting. Uh, they're fun, and a few of them have really high quality builds, like uh, well, closer to uh, 
closer to your uh, your case knives, which I've always had nice builds, maybe not the best blades for cutting, but these have both, and I'm I'm impressed and and a little bit vexed. So maybe tonight for the knife fight, we will talk about super cheap versus super expensive. Hey guys, just catching the end of the show, and I, have I missed the knife fight? And that's what we're talking about right now, Matthew. Yeah, so so for instance, you see. That that gorgeous birdvis knife that Ryan is holding up, and then this Mike, show that Strider again, please. Says That's Nick. my buddy Matt. That's my buddy Tino. He's seen it a bunch of times, uh, but I'll show it again. <laughs> just, for uh, just for your, just for our edification. So we have a, oh yeah, that Strider's gorgeous. Compound it, I, brown. I was gonna sell it, and it bit me and cut me to where I probably should have had stitches. And I'm like, guess what? It's probably mine now. Yeah, once, no, it yeah. bites you, right? once it bites you, it's yours. Ah, oh, uh, bit me. All right. I'm, so, I'm not gonna lie. I know we're doing a knife fight, but I have never seen anyone freehand a a nightmare grind that consistent. Mick, well, for, for all the controversy and stuff, Mick still gets it right every time. It's important to separate art from artist. You know, he. he it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who he is. It's it's about his knives. Uh, so, all right. So let's do this. Let's talk about this now. Uh, uh, here, Dave, here is a gonna drop. I wouldn't want to beat Bob in a knife fight again. I'm looking at the green room private chat. Oh, uh, what's it saying? <laughs> it says gonna <laughs> drop. I wouldn't want to beat Bob in a knife fight again. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! All right. Well, you know, here it is. So, right, so I, I, I am not in this one. I am not in this one. In this one, Ryan is going to defend the Rough Rider knife, and you, Mike, are going to defend the Birdvis knife. I got to, I got to defend the high end. I, do I yeah. look like a high end guy to you? Th that is not the point, sir. They say you debate better about the thing that you don't agree with. So true. it's true. It's true. So Ryan, <laughs> you're going to take a thousand dollars. This Rough Rider, Rider knife. Knife. I can debate either one. <laughs> okay, well, I have I to defend the. I have to defend the birdvis. Yes. Well, yeah. not necessarily this one, but uh, let's say a thousand plus dollar Bill Rupel or a birdvis or, you know, think, you know, 600 that, plus. That's, yeah. that's actually or, really easy. So do you want to go first? No, you go, you first, go first. You want me to go first? Okay. So yeah, having yeah. handled both a birdvis and a Bill Rupel or Bob Rupel, Bill Rupel, Bob Rupel, Bill, Bill. Um, any way you look at it, like I have handled his knives at every one of the California custom shows. And I'm here to tell you, there has never been one of those knives that I picked up and thought to myself, why do I have the goose? I just thought of a Bill Rupel knife. That's how nice they are. That says it all right there. The fact that I just thought about one of his knives and I have goosebumps that go all the way up my back. That's all I got to say. I win. <laughs> Hey, uh, let me let me just let me just say something. <laughs> In my family, we watch World of Dance. It's a dance reality show, and uh, one I'm of the a lot of respect for you. One of one of the guests <laughs> is uh, is uh, J Lo, and you know what she says when she sees something outstanding? She says, "Gooseys, I've got look, I've got gooseys." It proves it. I'm, I'm not joking. I was thinking about Bob, I was all we need to do is listen to you say I've got gooseys the rest you of the night. Not, and everyone, I'm not home, joking. I like, that's, that's, an honest, that's an honest response to what when I when I handle an incredibly beautiful, well-made, perfect knife, I get goosebumps. It's not a normal response for most people. Just thinking about how nice Bill Rupel's knives are and having yeah. handled it shows, that's what you get. And so, like, that's all I gotta say. Like, that's that's it. Thought, if Mike. the knife gives you goosebumps, that's it. You win. Now that Emler made it weird in here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm good so at right. that. I'm good at that. <laughs> uh, right, so um, while I agree that a knife like this could give you goosebumps, um, it's and the fitment and finish and all the all the great things that come from owning a, a custom slip joint, the tight tolerances and the walk and talk and all those things are great. However, there are so many classic slip joint designs out there that are now being produced again because of guys like Bill Rupel, Tony Bowes, Reese Bowes, that 
the case knives and uh, Great Eastern cutlery knives and a lot of the stuff that it aren't five, six hundred dollars, the quality level has improved so dramatically over the last, I, I would say, even the last five years. Um, and there are so many different model types that why own one when you can own six different classics from a mini uh, a mini dyno to, you know, a Barlow to a Swayback to, you know, a Hitchcock um, to a Gunstock, you name it. There are so many cool designs that the trappers and I mean, it just it's an endless array of styles that over the years um, bring all kinds of different usefulness from spade blades to drop points to skinners to all different styles that are used for so many different things. Why pigeonhole and corner yourself into only being able to get one when you could get pretty much one of every design and it be excellent quality, very usable with high quality steel and standards of production. Well, all right. Hey, uh, good arguments on both sides. I have to say uh, one thing I, I have to uh, agree with you, Ryan on is uh, if, if you're like me, I like, uh, Oftentimes with the slip joint knives, it's more about the covers. You know, it's about the, uh, the material. Yeah, choices. the handle materials. Ryan is clearly a well-versed salesman. <laughs> says Matthew. That, that, actually, uh, that, that was a really good. That was a really good argument, Ryan. It is a but, good argument. I mean, the first thanks. time you came on, we we're like, "Is this guy a Goosebumps. Never once. Ever. Yeah. No. Me. Me neither. Me neither. But that's like. I had to debate. I had to debate the other way. All right. Well, but but here's the thing. I mean, you look at the at the classic slip joint knives. Uh, I've recently been calling them traditionals, but th that's not as accurate as it could be. Um, mm -hmm. So let's just say slip joint knives. Um, to me, a big part of that is that they've always been meant to throw in the pocket and to yep. rattle around with the change and to go in the junk drawer and to spend years and years being kind of thrown around and still be functional and you could get yeah. that with a cheap knife and you could also obviously get that with a bird vis you uh if you know uh that was gonna be Ryan, you could throw that in the bottom of your pocket for the next hundred years you know yes and and give it to your grandchildren and it'll yeah. still you know so so i i'm not suggesting that the quality levels are the same but something about the role of a slip joint knife of a small pocket knife you know it that it, so to me, that is a really stunning uh, slip joint. And one thing I really love about it is that crazy shield. It's so like modern, like his, modern his shield is so epic. It is. It, it's, like modern, mod, it's like modern. It's like modern for the 1950s. You know, it's like yeah. it's got that sort of. But it's classy in, in classic. the future. Knives will look so like you, can feel, you can't feel any of the points where those different elements of that knife marry, can you? Like if no, you run no. your hand across eyes are closed you can't nail i can use my one. nail or whatever and no it's seamless the whole yeah. thing is seamless bird vis knives i'm not gonna lie bird vis knives are some of the best made i mean bill rupel bird vis knives some of those guys that have been making them forever those are some of the best knives in the world i mean you can't argue it they are look some of the best grind. grind look at that yeah i mean gorgeous. it is perfect so so yeah, ryan no says since I'm not going to be doing this anytime soon, I have an assignment for you, which is to find a really beautiful, and I don't know the maker, but find a really beautiful slip joint for us all to enjoy, uh, preferably a trapper. You know, I like this traditional spade blade and clip point blade, uh -huh. but with like mammoth ivory or some really gorgeous stag. Like, I love the uh, natural you're, material. You're going to make me do it. You're a jerk. Because you know why? Because <laughs> I've been looking at knife knifeology. If you guys want to go check the website out, and if someone buys it before me, then amen. Uh, but there is a Bill Rupel Remington model with a the best mammoth on it. Oh, oh dude, so, so good. Seen it. So I've seen it. It, it I'm, I'm like, I wish I had the money. It, it means something it that I just said that to you. It means something. Ah, you're a jerk. No, it I, means something. No, no, Oregon no, no, Knife no. Guy says Ryan was talking about GEC in case, not a twelve dollar Rough Rider. GEC yeah. is killing the production slip joint market, and case is classic. Now defending a twelve dollar marble right. from Rough Rider. So, oh well, uh, 
He's I, right. I was supposed to take Rough Rider, and I really went more to I gotta me, say me and Case, and that was a mistake. Okay, so Rough Rider and Case, win, right? Rough Rider and win. Case can compete. I, I from what I've seen of Rough Rider, I got six over the last week just to like check them out, and uh, I got a number of different models with different handle covers, and uh, and I got one marbles. Uh, I got where is it? It's upstairs. The uh, the sunfish, the big sunfish. Yep. That the that's marbles. A, a good night. The marble Can sunfish you bring up is the a comment? good. Night. So those are marbles yeah, I and uh, I was marbles and. Came up. Can yeah. You bring up that last comment, Bob. Uh, Jim. Yeah. So. Jim. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, Case and 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 not marbles, but Case and Rough Rider are are now on very similar par. I know that'll make a lot of people bristle, but Rough Rider's like killing it. Uh, well, they're, they're not, they're but not, they're but not the difference bad. between the difference between case slash rough rider and GEC is a, it's a different level. Uh, I I do I do love my GECs and uh, Big Sean. Uh, if you took the names off of the knives and put up a good sub hundred dollar against a a thousand dollar plus, most won't know which is which. So I, this I, is I, a, I didn't great if you're if you were. It's a great topic for discussion at some point. Tonight's probably not the yeah. night. Yeah. But I'll say this. Yeah, we as, up here at midnight. When, I, that's we, true. <laughs> for me, I, personally, I'm a sommelier. That, that's what I do as a line of work, right? I am a wine and spirits expert. And, and so I have a very refined palate. And the same thing, deductive kind of nature, I think about when I taste wine or spirits is the same deductive thing I use when I think about knives. So for me, think about me as like the sommelier in John Wick, where he went into the room and had all the badassery. Oh, for right? dessert. I'm the sommelier in that room when it comes to this stuff. So like for me, instantly, I, I, you, if you were to yep. test me blind and, and blindfolded, I, I would be able to tell. But I Just get what you're saying. And I, I, yeah, I agree. Like I, Like you and I are both are on the same – page ryan if if you hand me a hundred dollar knife and i'm blindfolded and then you hand me a thousand dollar knife i'm definitely going to be able to tell you just the way it feels in hand how the how the pocket clip and how the screws are nested yeah. and how everything feels i can tell you whether it's an expensive knife yeah or a or, or a relatively moderately priced knife or a super crappy thousand yeah, dollar maker who shouldn't be charging that that mm -hmm. happens there's that that's out there there's out there so, so uh, over this week, I <laughs> over this coming week, I have a uh, I have a Great Eastern Cutlery number ninety seven coming in. That's their big uh, Allegheny uh, clip point uh, that they had out about a year ago, and I, I I found it with the autumn jig bone that I love. I love that autumn jig bone. Something about it. Jig bone, yes. Oh, so beautiful. Uh, the knives me out. Uh, Lindy Lou says non knife people really won't. I've given my mom a two hundred dollar knife. And a thirty-five, and she couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, yeah, she's she's right. It all depends on like how much exposure you've had to the knife world, and how much exposure you've had to to top-tier knife makers. Like I've, I'm friends with some of the the best knife makers in the country, and so I can look at a knife. And so that that saying that a hundred-dollar knife uh, and a thousand-dollar knife, most people wouldn't say it. It could be accurate, but for people that have are well versed in knives and have been around mm -hmm. the knife community and knife shows and, and met these people. And like I said, I've, I've, I've taken tutelage from Bob Trezula and some of the best knife makers in the world, in the country and in the world. And it changes your perspective on looking at a knife and you can definitely see the, the differences between a moderately priced knife and a higher priced knife. And you kind of forget that like you're a sommelier yeah. right? and you kind of forget what it's like for me. I buy black box wine, right? Like, I, I don't, it, it's, it's kind of a different perspective. And I, I guess, I guess, yeah, there's two different ways to look at that. I would say, uh, totally for, for, I would say for non knife people, uh, uh, and folders, good thing is to check the blade play. That'll tell you kind of, kind of soon, uh, whether it's a piece of crap and then for fixed blades, if it makes your hand smell, it's probably from Pakistan. And we all know Pakistani <laughs> made fixed blades or, I mean, I mean, they just have a cheap, uh, yeah. fixed blade it's market and, and they make some fancy looking things with pans, some, old pots and pans. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yep. And they, they have that uh, reeking sort of copper uh, yes. uh, smell. And so, well, the, the reason I bring that up is I almost bought one because when I was looking and going like, 
I'm checking out all these Rough Riders. I'm like, there was a knife from my youth that I would like to get if I could find it, just kind of a stag handled short uh, German hunting knife that my parents had that disappeared. And I would love to have something like it just to have it. So I was looking at cheap marbles and, uh, uh, and Rough Riders that kind of looked vaguely like this German hunting knife. And I found a few, and then I saw that the country was or of origin was Pakistan. And I have nothing against the Pakistani people, but I hate their knives. I hate their knives uh, because we've all gone through that stage as young people or when we first started collecting knives, you, you get your hands on them and they're impossible to sharpen. They make your hand smell and, and they're, they're just... Really. I'm also tired of all the random messages I get on Instagram from the. Yes, Pakistan you want to buy nation. knife? Uh, like, you want to buy? You like Damascus? No, no like, I hate Damascus. Like Damascus. Get that shit out of my face. <laughs> I hate Damascus. Yeah. And by the Not way, I hate knives too. <laughs> Matthew um, Lee just just bought my niece a red cold steel tough light for her birthday. Any thoughts on it? Yes, excellent, yes, excellent great, knife. Great, and great tool. And uh, the if tough lights lock, have lock pretty lock easy lock going lock. locks, so she might have a, an easier time with it. What's that? The tough light. The tough light had a lot to do with why this blade yeah. shape not being what it is. I love the tough light. I yeah. just always wish it was bigger. I didn't like the. I didn't like the lock uh, in gloves and things like that. That's kind of where this came from. It was something. I that is a great great knife, especially for a new knife owner like someone oh, that's yeah. young getting knives that's a really good knife yeah, because it's going to got a really useful blade they can use it for anything it's it's utilitarian it's very sharp it doesn't look that menacing and with with the uh, ergonomics it's going to stay in her hand really well uh, ours uh, we have a serrated one in the bathroom and the lock comes unlocked really easily and uh, yeah i think that's a great that's a great choice i just got my daughter for her birthday in june uh, she turned 10. I got her a Swiss Army knife Tinker. I believe it was the Tinker model. For her, that was the perfect knife because she's borrowed mine before and it's got all the tools and, you know. So, yeah, I think I think getting uh, kids knives, especially girls, great idea. You know, like people don't need to be freaked out about knives. Yep. I make them, I make them for my kid. Every one of my prototypes oh. kind of winds up. You found it. Oh, I guess so. Oh. I guess this is what I want oh, right there. I didn't, I didn't realize. Look at it. Just look. It's, it's yeah, got integral, integral titanium bolsters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's just so pretty. It's, it's perfect. It is perfect. Hey, did we decide who won the knife fight or are we still discussing it? I think Ryan won it. <laughs> did he? All right. <laughs> so, oh, Winchester, that, so the, uh, oh, well, look at the jimping. Dear oh, Lord, jumping so on a good. crown, on a crown oh, spine, it's just gorgeous. It's, uh, but but the uh, I like the shield, the bullet shield. That's yeah, that's the Remington. The, that's that's Remington. Remington. I've got I've got one of the Remingtons that was made by was it Case that did the Remington Rimfire I series? I have one that I'm, was my grandfather's. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to buy that. Yeah, I, I think you should too because I can't afford it because that's the that's more that's just about my mortgage payment. And I, I yes. So I get can't it for all the house, I, let, let me let me just close with this, Ryan. I said uh, what I would really like is a trapper, and that's a that's a single bladed locking trapper. I said I, what 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 you need to get is a trapper with mammoth ivory. And gosh darn, I'll uh, I'll I'll be hog swallowed if Jim one. didn't just bring one up for all of us to look at. <laughs> Bill's got one that he has at the knife show. He showed it right to Cali back. It's uh, it's a slip joint mammoth uh, uh, trapper with the spade and the clip point blade. I've seen it. He's done several of them. He brings them to the Cali Custom Show every year. And every year I see him, he goes, you can buy it this time. And I'm like, no, Bill, I'm not. He's like, no, no, I'm picking this up for my buddy, Bob. Well, are you going to, are you going? Maybe you, maybe you can act as my, uh, what the Cali um, Custom? My porter. What do you call it? Uh, your, your, um, I'm going to go as a uh, proxy. Uh, I'll tell you. you what, like I said, you have to DM me anyway about the other knife. DM yeah. me. I, I may be going. Uh, there's a handful of knife makers that I've been talking to. They're like, are you going? I haven't got to see you for more than a year. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I've got an autoimmune disorder. Yeah. I, oh, me man. No I don't know. I can have yeah, I don't but know. the fact that I'm outside and everyone's going to be wearing masks, I'm going to talk to my doctor and see if I can't get him to, you know, I got to at least have some fun. For the year, I haven't worked since April second. I think we can get them to do something about this pandemic thing, huh? Yeah. In the meantime, um, hey, 
Can I, can I, can I, uh, cause I didn't get the answer. Am I growing or downsizing my collection? And I, I kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to so hear him. My collection is growing, but not intentionally. I honestly, the, the YouTube channel is kind of picked up and I have had people sending me things as gifts and th mm -hmm. things like that. They're like, Oh, keep it as giveaway. So is my collection growing? Um, Maybe for a month at a time, but I'm minim I'm I'm maximizing my efforts to to minimize my collection by doing giveaways. So hmm. look, this is a simple plug for my channel. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I do please. a monthly giveaway. I do a monthly giveaway of a top tier high end item to my paying members that are on the top tier, which is the fourteen dollar a month tier on my channel. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes include the lower tiers, but basically I do two giveaways a month. So I'm giving away items on the channel, which are things that necess not necessarily would be things that I would love and want to keep. So if you guys are interested in my channel, I do do a giveaway every month. Cool. Thanks so, for so use that on the plug. Dude, of course, that's I mean, that's what <laughs> we're here for, right? As much as I like this felt it's backwards. As much as I like this felt spar, it's probably gonna wind up being a giveaway. That's it. So I I do like the look of that knife. I do like the look of that knife. You know it's what it reminds me of? But... It's, it's nothing but belly. It reminds me of yeah. if you ever followed Jim Skelton when he first started making a knife. He made a knife it's called a the occipital. His, yeah. Exactly, the occipital. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of. It's a folding version of the occipital with handles from what looks like maybe a Benchmade Griptilian. It is a really nice knife. It's just not... I just don't seem to like it as much as I like Dylan Mallory's Centros. Right. I, I just, yeah, it, the yeah, Centro uh, ended up uh, becoming a, a Bark River knife. They the Bark River yeah. made the occipital, and you can actually. I was lurking around uh, DLT or uh, GP knives. I can't remember which. Uh, looking around in their in their. Um, uh, 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 Bark River knives, yeah, their Bark River knives section actually because uh, I want to get in on the Boone too, which is coming out soon. Which is cool, it's a nice knife. knife too. I love that knife. Uh, but yeah. um, but anyway, I saw a bunch of occipitals. What a cool looking knife, and a, what it a great company nice. to, yeah. to collaborate with. All right, guys, I think that's me. I think that's me for the evening. So uh, I want to thank you guys for coming on, Ryan. Yeah, we know has spirited Ryan, I, would, I would put this out to you, but keep in mind that I made this for myself, so I cut some corners. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And uh, and of course, crazy sharp Mike Emler. Mike, thanks for coming on. As always, thanks and Dave. Uh, oh, my pleasure, Dave. This old sword. Uh, check him out. He's got a new uh, YouTube channel. He's doing a lot of cool uh, videos on knives that are a little bit off the beaten path. If you're a tactical knife uh, lover and you like crazy shapes and cool, uh, uh, interesting knives, definitely check out uh, uh, this old sword. He also does some. Some more uh, middle of the road kind of knives too, and of course uh, check out Ryan yeah, and Mike. Cool. They both they both do live video. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, check out my live streams for sure on yep. Instagram. You're doing one about every day. I know uh, Mike does yeah. one about every day. Matthew, thank you, sir. I do. I do live feeds usually Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays if I can swing them, and I have actual like edited videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But like I said, with my daughter having an injury, we're driving. 400 miles yeah uh every, every week for her physical therapy it uh it definitely has impacted the production you're, you're out, well we all we all hope your daughter's injury heals itself right quick we know that she relies on her body to do all that cool ice skating she does uh so we hope she she does better real soon look for, look for her in the 2022 olympics I already i i'm on uh i'm on zoom and uh, oh dude i i hope i'm sure you'll let us all know about it that'll oh, be awesome God. i'm like this is crazy i have a kid that's that they're planning her olympic track right now jeez man you're you're living vicariously you're like i always wanted to be a figure skater and now child you're doing it in my stead <laughs> no, you always wanted to be a knife maker. Well, you're doing a great job. Back to those Russian chicks in the, in the, in the, in the mini skirts. Yeah. I wanted to be a gun maker, and that just never worked out. Well, you're, you're halfway there. You're working with metals, and they can be weapons. Uh, so I, like I want to just say uh, for Ryan, Mike, myself, and, of course, Jim working his magic behind the switcher there. Thank you all for coming in and uh, and being a part of it and commenting. And of course, if you're going to Patreon, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. Caleb Townsend, 
your second win right here will be uh, in the mail tomorrow. So uh, look for that sometime early next week. That's your SOG Pentagon XR, sir. All righty, y'all. So thank you very much for joining me on Thursday Night Knives. And uh, I'd like to say, don't take Dull for an answer. Take care. <laughs>